Hello and welcome to John Can Fix Anything. Today I'm going to show you how to install a top post master battery disconnect. I'm also going to show you how to service your terminals. So if you want to know how to install this, then stay tuned. Before we get started, let me go over what you're going to need for this project. First and foremost, you need a good pair of safety glasses. You're going to be working around your vehicle, working around batteries. You don't want to get anything in your eye that's going to hurt your eyesight. So make sure you use a good pair of safety glasses. The second thing is, and the, probably the heart of this install is going to be a, a BS200. This is from uh, Gamma Electronics, and I'll put a link down in the uh, remarks column for it. Now this is an American-made uh, bypass switch, and I really like this switch because, first of all, it's American-made. Second of all, it's a twist type, and you can use this for a couple of different features. One, you can use it when you're going to uh, want to work on your vehicle instead of taking your battery posts off. You can just give this a quarter turn and bang, you're, you've just disconnected the power on your, uh, on your vehicle. The second thing this can also be used for is you can go ahead and twist this all the way out. If you've got a vehicle that uh, maybe you don't drive that often, you can pull this all the way out and it's kind of an anti-theft device, so that works very well. Uh, also, for what I just uh, spoke about, if you've got a vehicle, um, say it's um, an additional vehicle or, or a vehicle that you don't start very often, uh, this is a really good install for that because it will keep you from running batteries down. Uh, on the 80s and 90s vehicles, a lot of them had um, anti-theft devices or small electronics like a small computer system that continually drew amperage from the battery. So by installing this, you'll be able to uh, work that out so that you don't run your batteries down all the time. Also, this was a um, this was a request that one of the first requests I ever got on my channel was to create a video for installing one of these. So I'm doing that for a subscriber and I really appreciated him uh, bringing up the subject. So if you have any subjects that you would like to see on a uh, video in the future, please leave them down in the remarks column. Okay, the second thing you're going to need, of course, is you're going to need whatever type of tools is um, the size for your battery terminal. We're working off the negative battery terminal, so you're going to need, in my case, it's, a, it's an 8, and then I'm going to be using also a half inch for the new uh, connector. You're also going to need a set of battery terminal protectors. I use these. They're red and green. I, I'm sure you've probably seen them. Uh, these are really good after we get everything cleaned up and ready to go. Put these back on and that'll keep your terminals looking good for a lot longer time. A couple of different types of uh, wire brushes is good. If you have a battery terminal cleaner, that's even better um, because it's kind of made for the batteries to clean up the terminals and it's really important that you get that terminal nice and clean. Now when you get your uh, disconnect, your, your battery disconnect from uh, Gamma Electronics, they're also going to have a pretty nice detailed instruction. This is a very simple install. We're probably going to spend more time cleaning the terminals than we are on actually installing this, uh, this particular bypass. You're going to also need a good set of rubber gloves and I highly recommend these because we're going to be working on the battery. And anytime you're working on the battery, like I said, oxidization, also what about the battery acid. So you want to make sure you cover your skin. Good set of um, gloves. I think that's about everything we need. I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up on the vehicle and then I'll be back shortly. All right, the first thing you're going to need to do is determine what uh, size your wrench you're going to need for your terminals. In my particular case, mine is a 10 millimeter. And the first thing you want to do is take off the negative first, and then we're going to take off the positive. And remember, we're going to do a terminal service, so that's why we're going to go ahead and do both of them. If you were just putting the uh, bypass on, you could, you could get away with just doing it with the negative. But we're going to go ahead and do it with uh, both so that we can go ahead and do this service. Now my my battery is very well kept as you can see so it's not going to need a lot of cleaning but I'm going to go ahead and go through the process anyway so you know exactly what you're doing. Now 
And as you can see, my terminal posts are extremely clean. That's because I do a lot of maintenance on my vehicles. But generally speaking, you're going to find some type of oxidization on the actual uh, posts. If you do, and you have um, one of these tools, this is a uh, terminal post cleaner. These are very cheap, they're very reasonable. You can get them at Walmart or buy it off Amazon and go to your local auto parts store. They're very cheap, very reasonable. And they have this nice function right here which has a set of uh, cleaning wire brushes built into the handle. And you can take that, put it right on top of your terminal, and you can clean that terminal up just in 30 seconds. It'll make it nice and clean. It'll take off anything that's on it. Just go ahead and give that a good cleaning. Make sure you've got that nice and scarred up so it'll make a nice good connection. Then if you also, if you have anything surrounding it, go ahead and use a regular wire brush. You know, and just make sure you clean around it. I apologize for mine being very, very clean, but uh, I do try to take good care of my stuff. Okay, so once you, however long that takes, however long it takes for you to get these battery posts in shape, go ahead and do it. They should look just like this when you're ready to go. There shouldn't be any oxid oxidization left on it. Blah, blah, it's hard to speak that word. So anyway, make sure they're nice and clean. They look just like this, okay? Once you get the battery posts cleaned up and looking good like this, then go ahead and you know grab your battery terminal protectors. This is an optional item. You don't have to go buy them if you don't want to. But I do highly recommend it because these will really keep these uh, posts from having any kind of issues for a very long time. Much longer than if you just left them alone. Okay, so I highly recommend that you go and spend that. I think it's you know five or seven dollars. I'll find it. I'll find out exactly, and I'll leave a link posted down in the remarks column. So you got to find out what size you need. Some of them, you know, the green goes on the uh, negative. Okay, the red goes on the positive, and they've got little indentions on them. So if you've got bigger posts, you can go ahead and pull out the centers and put the put them on the bigger posts. So, but these actually fit the American made vehicle exactly right. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, positive back on because that doesn't have anything to do with our install. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it back on real quick. Tighten it up. If your nut and bolt uh, that holds on your terminal, if it's got any kind of, of uh, oxidization on it, go ahead and take, actually take it apart and go ahead and use a wire brush. Make sure you clean it up good. And then after we're all done in installing, I'm going to put a light coat of grease on these and I'll show you that as well. So I'm just going to leave this open for now. Okay, so now I've got the positive back on. I'm ready to go get the uh, bypass and we'll go ahead and put it on. Okay, I'm back with a new bypass. So now what you need to do is, before you put uh, the bypass in, make sure you take a look at your negative uh, connector, and if it has anything on the inside of it that needs to be cleaned, you know, if, you're, if you have one of these tools, it's got an inside that's made just for this. So go ahead and run it in here. Just clean it out good and make sure that it's gonna get a really, really good connection. It's nice and clean, and it doesn't have any corrosion in it. Go ahead and do that real quick. It only takes a couple seconds. Then what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to determine where this is gonna fit the best. So I'm gonna just set it on there. And I think mine's gonna be best right there on the center. Uh, make sure you don't ground it. You've got some, some metal all around this battery. So when you actually get this put on, you wanna make sure you don't ground that out. Okay, but right there in the center is probably the best connection for mine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and see how this is made just to slip your Existing negative just slips right over that, just like that. And you go ahead and, in my case, you take a number 10. Go ahead and tighten that up. Make sure you tighten it up well. You don't want to strip anything, but it needs to be on there good. So I've got that on there. I know just about where I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and place it in and it'll actually put power back on the vehicle when you do this. And I'm gonna center it up. Make sure that's exactly where I want it. And then on the uh, new bypass, it's a half inch. It's American made, so it's, a, it's an SAE half inch size. So make sure you get that in there centered good. Let's go ahead and tighten this up. OK, 
Okay, and again, make sure you don't have anything grounding this out. Make sure it's really secure on the post, on the battery post. And in my case, this really fits very, very snugly. I read a lot of the reviews um, on this particular bypass and uh, some Toyotas and Nissans did not fit snugly. So uh, pay attention to what type of vehicle you want to put this on. You might want to review, um, review some of those remarks and make sure because uh, there were some negatives because of that. But all in all, it's a four-star um, bypass and I, and I liked it because it was American made. Okay, so I've got that in. As soon as I put that on, I could hear the uh, connection being made on this on this Mazda, so I know it's got a good connection. But you want to make sure that's nice and tight. Make sure that all your uh, connections that you put on were tight. And go back over them one more time, wouldn't hurt, just to make sure. And it all looks really good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just a little bit of uh, all-purpose grease, and I want to show you just a couple of little tricks, and then we'll be right back. Okay, this is a little trick that I've used for probably 20 years. I take some uh, extreme pressure multipurpose, you know, this is complex, high temperature grease, make sure you use high temperature. And what I do with it, I just take a little soft brush and I go ahead and use it and I put it on top of the terminals and top, on top of the uh, nuts. And that keeps it, everything in extremely good shape and also, it puts another layer of protection for that oxidization so it doesn't start on the bolts because that can really do it. I don't worry about anywhere else. I just put it right on top and I put it right around the, the nut and the bolt. Just like that. And then go ahead and if you've got covers, go ahead and put your covers back on. Some do, some don't. Most of your red ones have covers and uh, your black ones usually don't. Then on this one, I do it on the old terminal connection just like that. And I also put it on the new half inch connection in the back. Okay, so we've got that applied. We've got everything put back together the way the, way the instructions call for. So now we are go ahead and I'm ready. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give the vehicle a quick start and make sure we've got a connection. Then I'm also gonna take it off a uh, quarter turn off and make sure that we don't have one. So I'm gonna clean up my tools and then we'll be back in just a second and uh, give this a try. All right, I went ahead and started the vehicle. You can hear it running and everything is nice and secure. The vehicle started up without any problem and I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off now. We're gonna give this a, a quarter turn and then we're gonna try to start it again. Give this a quick quarter turn. And I could hear it immediately drop off the power, so I know it's out, but I'll go ahead and give it a quick check inside. But I'm sure it did the job. And it's dead. Completely dead. Go back. Give this a quarter turn back. Actually, I took a couple turns. Okay. Go back in. I've got lights as soon as I open the door, so I know I'm good. And it started up without any issue. I noticed it lagged just a little bit, and that's the way my vehicle is whenever I uh, disconnect my battery. You may have a vehicle that's like that as well. If you do, just uh, you know, let it crank for just another second, and it'll go ahead and start up. So we've got everything done. Now I've got a, a nice uh, battery bypass in place. So whenever I wanna work on my vehicle and I need to disconnect the uh, negative, I'll be able to do that without taking the terminal loose and that'll be uh, very, very beneficial. It's also, like I said previously, it's very beneficial if you've got an older vehicle, you know, a, a 70s, 80s, or 90s vehicle, especially an 80s and 90s vehicle that had that anti-theft device or had um, a little trip computer or something like that that, that 
that pulled you know regular power from the battery that's a good way to just give that a quarter turn off and then you won't uh, run your battery down so uh, this video was uh, brought upon by a subscriber and friend of mine who uh, had an older vehicle and he wanted to know how to install this and I was very happy to do so. If you have uh, something that you'd like to see on a future video, please leave that in the remarks column. If you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up or even better yet, if you'd subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And that's all I've got and have a great day.